As you guys can see, we are playing Pokemon X and we are getting more than 70 FPS in Citra MMJ Android. Let's get started. Yo, what's up, guys? It's Aprix here. Welcome to the 2023 Citra Emulator Android Setup Best Settings Gameplay Video. I'll be showing you guys the best settings for Citra MMJ as well as official Citra Android. As you know, official Citra Android has received its major breakthrough with Vulkan support for both Android and PC platforms. But before starting, if you guys could hit that like button, subscribe, turn on all notification, it would mean the world to me because I want to reach 60,000 subscribers as soon as possible and I keep uploading similar videos on my channel. With that being said, let's start with the minimum requirements. You need 2GB RAM, Android version 8 or above for Citra MMJ Android, for official Citra Android, I guess Android version 9 or above. Also you need a Snapdragon 450 processor or above. 2GB RAM for low-end 3DS titles and 3GB RAM for all regular 3DS titles and you should be fine. So these are the minimum requirements and Citra emulator has been improved quite a lot. But I'm guessing that with the latest official Citra Android update with Vulkan support, that feature will only work with Android devices above Android version 10. So for Vulkan support Android 10 or above, for OpenGL ES Android version 9 or above, for official Citra, Citra MMJ works with Android 8 or above. With that being said, let's start with our today's video. Alright guys, let's start. First of all, I have already loaded the official Citra Android as well as latest build of Citra MMJ Android. Let's start with official Citra Android because that's the emulator which most of you guys will be using. Let's tap on don't allow and ok. I have already loaded my copy of Pokemon X on the official Citra Android. It is a 2000 build of official Citra Android. Let's just go ahead and tap on settings. In premium, as you know, you get light theme or dark theme. But we won't be messing with that. Let's go to general. Make sure to untick the limit speed percentage option. Afterwards, go to system, region should be auto select, clock should be default and make sure to allow games to change plugin loader state. Afterwards, let's go to graphics directly because uh, camera options are not useful. In graphics API, you can go with OpenGL ES or Vulkan. Now as I mentioned before, if your Android device has Android version 10 or above and also a MediaTek processor with Mali GPU, I recommend you guys to go with Vulkan GPU or Vulkan graphics API as it will provide the best amount of FPS possible. But for me OpenGL ES has always been the preferred graphics API because with Vulkan I encountered lot of graphical issues hopefully that has been fixed we'll be taking a look at it in today's video enable SPIRV shader generation enable asynchronous shader compilation internal resolution keep it according to your device specification the device which I'll be using in today's video has Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor so we can go all the way up to 4x internal resolution but I recommend you guys to keep it anywhere from 1 to 2 times Anyways, linear filtering, make sure to disable this option. You can enable it, but it will cause some low FPS. As you can read here in the description, game visuals will appear smoother if you enable this option. It will affect your performance, so I would recommend you guys to keep it disabled. Accurate shader multiplication, make sure to disable this option as well, uh, because you will get low FPS if you enable this option. Disk shader cache, make sure to enable it. And that's about it for the graphics settings. By the way, you can enable accurate shader multiplication if you face any graphical issues like the Greninja uh, bug or Froki bug where the character isn't loaded properly. So that will be fixed if you enable accurate shader multiplication. In audio stretching, make sure to disable this option. And that's about it guys. Let's jump right into the gameplay of Pokemon X. And afterwards, I'll show you guys uh, the Citra MMJ setup. We'll see how much FPS will we get in that emulator. Let's just go ahead and tap on OK. And let me flip the screen, let's enable show FPS. And there we go at the top left side, you'll be able to see we are getting around 60 FPS. That's pretty cool. Let's wait for the game to start. Alright guys, the game is about to begin and you'll notice that the FPS is stuck to 30s. But nonetheless, if you mess with the configuration of Citra MMG Android, you can disable speed limit and you can let the speed percentage go all the way up to 1000 if you wish to do so. Remember guys, in 2022, there were some crazy amount of FPS which we used to get on Citra Black Edition or forked versions or other forked version of Citra Emulator. Like I used to get literally 400 plus FPS during this point. But I am surprised that even with Vulkan Graphics API, we are getting stable 30 FPS. I am pretty sure that we can exceed way over 120 FPS. But nonetheless, it is capped for some reason. So we'll ignore it and we'll see if we can uncap the FPS in Citra MMG Android. Alright, there we go guys. The game is about to begin and I am still very surprised that there are no graphical issues. So Vulkan implementation in official Citra Android is successful. You can rest easy uh, by choosing the graphics API as Vulkan. 
Previously, there were just so many bugs that it wasn't even worth it during the Vulkan API beta testing, but now it's completely stable. So let's just go ahead and uh, go outside and see if we get any issues while rendering the outside world and also frame drops. All right, guys, we have left the house. Let's see if there are any issues. And as far as I can see, 4x graphics resolution is looking pretty sharp. And there was a frame drop, okay. But we are now back to 30 FPS. So there are no major frame drops. It's pretty sustainable. Let's move on towards Citra MMJ Android. All right, guys, I have opened the latest build of Citra MMJ Android. You'll notice immediately the change in UI. You get three layouts here. And if you just go ahead and tap on the top right corner, you'll get a lot of other options such as multiplayer support as well, which isn't present in official Citra Android. Let's tap on the CPU icon, make sure to enable dual core internal resolution 4x, show FPS has been enabled along with hardware shader, accurate multiplication is turned off, shader type is normal shader with catch. You can turn on separate shader, but we'll be going with normal shader. Speed limit percentage is set to 200, new 3ds mode has been enabled, enable CPU JIT has also been enabled and that's about it. Let's go back and enter our game. And our game has successfully started. You'll be able to notice we are getting over 400 FPS and speed percentage is around 750. But I'm pretty sure that once we start the game, it should go down to let's say 60 FPS because limit speed percentage is set to 200. So 200% speed is 60 FPS. No, uh, yeah, we are getting anywhere from 40 to 60 FPS. So the FPS isn't really constant in Citra MMG Android, but it is way better. All right, we are getting more than 99 FPS in some cases. That's pretty impressive. Now, this is where I'm a bit confused. I set the speed limit percentage to 200, but nonetheless, you will be able to see that it's exceeding over 200 anyways. So that's pretty cool, I guess. But I would say that uh, 60 FPS is a playable gameplay experience. Anything about 200% speed will cause the audio to be much faster as you might be able to hear so the audio is going very fast that's why it's not recommended you can enable limit speed percentage option and this issue will be gone away but let me show you guys some additional settings if you click on this home icon and go to settings you'll get more options such as joystick uh, feedback controller scale controller opacity but here we'll enable skip cpu slow draw okay here we have enabled skip slow draw, skip CPU access. Afterwards, force texture filter is auto. Geometry shader is also auto. Enable shadow rendering has been turned on along with asynchronous shader compilation. Compatible mode, resolution is set to 4x. Layout is large, accurate multiplication off and speed limit is 9999%. All right. This is the reason why we are getting more than 60 FPS. I think it's because previously we used a fourth version of Citra MMJ Android and the Citra MMJ's configuration was stored in folder, Citra MU folder. So if you delete the configuration and reset your uh, settings, then it should be fine. Anyways, the game is about to begin. I'll cut to the part when we enter the outside world. Okay, we have exited our house. Again, this is in 4x graphics resolution major frame drops we went all the way down to 8 fps but nonetheless we are still getting around 40 or 50 fps in outside world so that's a pretty good frame rate but i am still not really uh, satisfied with this fps because i think my dos is capable to give me more than uh, 200 fps and we have already tested it in my other videos on official citra android we used to get more than 120 fps well in citra mmg android for some reason in the newer updates we don't really seem to get that kind of performance but nonetheless it's pretty cool it is playable and this is citra mmj android in 2023 let me know in the comment section down below which emulator would you like to use citra mmj android with its special features like multiplayer support easy cheat code layout and much more or official citra android which gives you regular updates and also more optimized or compatible i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching goodbye